There we go. There we go. Right. Well, hello again. Thanks for having me back. Obviously, didn't uh, do too much of a bad job last time around. I think it was June. I think was it maybe uh, last time around? No, it wasn't. It was. Yeah. It was April. Bloody hell. Okay, that's that's blown by. So it's a little bit warmer in this uh, room today. Um, uh, so what we're going to do today, I thought, a bit of a change. Uh, last time uh, I talked about some sort of what we class template flies. So you can kind of use uh, these patterns to uh, imitate a variety of things, right? It doesn't matter whether they're emergers or upwings or whatever. Um, the key was um, to uh, keep it simple um, and generally we were after that um, that methodology of guess all right so general impression of size and shape right so as I mentioned last time um, and we'll, well, well that'll be the the kind of um, the idea uh, behind all of the flies today as well um, again keeping it simple um, we're only going to use a couple of uh, materials but I thought because we're in the kind of the dog days of um, the season, what we'll do is uh, tie some small flies, right? Um, so when I say small, um, the largest will be 20. And a couple of years back, I say a couple of years back, about 10 years ago, I set myself a bit of a challenge to only fish size 20s and smaller, right? So it was, it was interesting. Um, but it was fun, right? Teaches you a lot. One about sort of uh, tying itself, right? Because you know you can, you can't just go on with the twelve volt thread, which we'll cover today. Um, you need to use uh, kind of tools for the trade, um, and really this kind of it does help to tighten up some tying. Um, know your materials. Uh, you know, three wraps will do instead of twelve. You know, if you don't need them, so it does make things a little bit more. Uh, efficient I find and certainly from a fishing standpoint it, uh, it makes things a little bit more uh, insane so uh, yeah it, it's um, it's fun right so as I say we're in the dog days of uh, of the UK trout season long days uh, we, you can go a long time without seeing a rise and then when you kind of do you hit the evening spell and if there's no uh, spinner fall to speak of which at the moment we're lucky enough to have on my local rivers in the Usk then you know you, you haven't got to worry you can just flick out size 16 anything all night and you're good but at some point it does get quite tricky um, you do need to sort of rummage uh, through the fly by box and you know you feel like you've put everything over them so i've found that over the years that having a couple of small flies and small generic sort of patterns when they are locked on to smaller invertebrates or terrestrials does you know help and as we mentioned in the last session back in april as long as they are in as long as we're presenting these things where trout expect to see them then you know if we haven't spooked the trout then we've kind of won half the battle right Getting them to drift right is another thing, but we'll come on to uh, the gear in a bit. So before we do, um, one thing that kind of got me into fishing smaller flies, um, so again, the largest being size 20, um, was one, uh, a chap from uh, Northern Ireland, um, Andy Baird. He's sort of known in the, the small fly geek circles as uh, one of the masters. Um, amazing fly tire. Again, very sort of a generic fly tire. Um, you know, just uses bits and bobs and these things look awesome, right? Much better than I could ever do. Um, but again, a little bit more time, effort, and I, I just always pull back from that and I just keep things uh, a little simple. But um, if you are interested, what, um, again, what also got me onto this are a couple of books for those who do enjoy reading about the stuff. So I've got a couple of years. So Ed Engel is based in Colorado in the States. Um, so one of his books, I think the first one was 2004. So this one's Tying Small Flies, all right? Um, chuck these out of the way as we go. So Tying Small Flies, and then a year later, he followed it up with Who'd Have Thought? Fishing Small Flies, right? Um, now, both amazing books. do teach you quite a lot about patterns. In my opinion, there's, there's way too many patterns in there, right? We, you know, how many patterns do you need to try and fool a fish? Uh, great guy. We've had a couple of chats via email over the years. Uh, knows his stuff. But the thing with the guys who were fishing in Colorado and certainly like the South Platte River, these reservoir-fed uh, um, backwaters, so to speak, 
is they get these regular flushes of water and quite often or more often than not during their winter spells the water temperatures there are fairly well relatively warm right so they've always got um some uh, invertebrates coming off now they do get quite a lot of pressure as well so what a lot of the angling fraternity they have done is they've they've been forced to go smaller um because the fish have seen them all right so 14s 12s forget it they've seen them all uh 16s 18s even now nah, 20s and down this is where it's at right and they're the main uh, uh hardy goers uh if you can't find those two books then who would have thought it he released another one that had them both together, right? So fishing and tying small flies. So it's not just a, a rehash of everything in the first two books. Um, I think there's about, what, 14 years between uh, fishing small flies and, and the doubler. So that was released in 2019. Um, so it's been updated as well, right? Because some of the rods, some of the leader makeups were a lot older. Um, I'd stay, still say very valid. Um, but it's been brought more up to date. So that's in regards to the tying of small flies and fishing them. All right. Um, now, another last final book for those of you who kind of want to get into the nitty gritty of it is uh, an awesome book, if you can find it, uh, Modern Midge, all right, by uh, Rick Takahashi and Jerry Hubka. So Modern Midge is, again, it's got hundreds of patterns, pattern after pattern after pattern after pattern, pages and pages and pages, right? Hundreds of pages and hundreds of patterns. Again, we really need how many midge imitations. Again, if we take it back to, you know, keeping it simple, have a couple, right? And have a, have a couple of sizes in those couple of patterns maybe, but you don't need hundreds, right? Um, definitely not. As I said last time, life's hard enough. Keep it simple when we're on the river, right? So. Those are the books, if you are interested in following up. And what I'll do, as um, I did with Derek last time, I sent him a load of pictures uh, or put them on the Facebook group for Ludlow. So I'll, I'll pop in the description of the books as well. And, and they are well worth a read, right? So when the season's gone and uh, we're into winter, grab a book, those sorts of things, at the vice, uh, and they're really good, right? Um, so in terms of fishing gear as well so again when i do a couple of shows now and and you know you've got these tiny little things on on the bench on the, on the fly hooks first thing people ask is how the hell can you thread them right so if you do see a couple of small hooks themselves right like there's uh there's uh what is it this is sort of the the mythical venerable hook right for small fly guys and, that, and i'll sort of zoom in on that if you if you can see it so that's a tm go 518 if it zooms in i'll show it to you a bit closer again and that's a size 32 now relatively speaking the the hook guy on that is relatively quite big right it's still small don't get me wrong it's a size 32 hook, right um but for the size of hook and shank um, it's fairly small. So that's the smallest one that I found. You can look at um, maybe some of the carp hooks. I mean, the, the carp guys have been using small hooks for donkey's years, way before the trout got, uh, scene got onto it. Um, so really that's the smallest one that uh, is out there. Uh, and it's certainly uh, fun to uh, tie on. Certainly when you've been tying maybe an order of, uh, you know, 12s, 14s, 16s, seven down to a 32 is uh, uh, testing, right? So, but again, it comes back to the right materials for the right job, right? Um, speaking of which then, tying tonight, I won't be using anything bigger than 18 oat. So again, back to, uh, where are we? Again, I'll, I'll switch cameras in a bit and I'll show you um, a close up. But again, this is all Semperfy Nano Silk uh, in 30 Dania or 18 oat, right? So again, no any materials, I suppose. It can be a bit slippery because it's GSP thread, right? Gel spun. Uh, but again, you know, once you tied a dozen flies with it, you kind of got used to it. Um, and you know how much pressure to put on at the right time, at the wrong time, and so on. So there's that. Um, there are other things, again, uh, for those who have seen me tie before, I like hackled 
flies, right? I just love uh, chicken, really, um, and roosters. So again, uh, a couple of things that we can do. So obviously, we need uh, very small uh, hackles, right? And ideally, with very thin stems, right, or rapuses, right? We don't want them really thick because we start wrapping those around a size 32. And again, it's bigger than the bloody hook, right? So again, this is when we look at, you know, genetically grown um, uh, birds, all right? Um, you can use things like necks, all right? So these are all white in. You can use saddles. Uh, again, saddles appropriately sized are good for small flies themselves. Uh, with the neck, obviously, at the top, You've got the very small fibers or very small feathers as well. Uh, and then likewise, um, what whiting do is a range of uh, what they call the midge sizes, right? Um, now, as my missus once thought, they aren't small chickens, right? They just happen to have uh, smaller hackles on them, right? And they're obviously graded, they're part of the pro grade range. Um, but again, they're graded for specifically midge sizes, right? They call them midge, but anything from size 18 down, sometimes a 16, so they can do it all, but um, 18s and certainly you get, if you have a look at them yourself, obviously, this is where the, the problem of internet shopping comes in because you can't get your hands on them. Um, but I know Nigel at Lakeland, for example, who is the main reseller of uh, white in farm stuff in the UK, uh, again, have a word with him and tell him what you're, what you're trying to tie if you're interested in tying these smaller flights. So, uh, Lastly, uh, so we talked about the tying gear, talked about the books. We'll go on to some patterns in a minute. Uh, but before we do, again, uh, fishing gear, all right? So uh, you can't just go straight at fishing small flies with, uh, you know, your faster action tip flex rods because straight away we're using thinner diameter tippet, right? So we want a, a, a rod that has a, a flex that's a little bit softer or softer tip but modern rods these days, even though even the sage rods, right, which were known as cannons back in the day, they were over the years, they've done probably a lot of slower action rods as well. So things like the Trout LL, which is the new one out today, um, some of the softer, it doesn't matter what rod it is, but make sure you've got some sort of softer tip in, in your rod because we want to protect those thinner diameter tippets. And then in terms of tippet, personal thing right everybody likes a different tippet um me myself i've been using real stuff for since before i can remember um i like the supple flex um as the name states it's nice and supple it allows our flies to to drift with a little bit more uh realism all right and again really the the, the thinnest i really like to go down to is 7x all right i like the x ratings right so you'll never hear me talk about like some of the guys and you know it's personal preference some of the guys who talk about point this that millimeters i don't know so looking at this this is 0.1 or 2 mil if that means anything to you it's a 7x to me and it's two pound break and strain okay so two pound break and strain with a nice soft tip it's more like four pound right um again it's two pound direct pull we're never going to get that well i might if i'm fishing it badly um but generally we want a nice nice big bend in the rod so uh that's my to the choice again, personal thing, and uh, use what you want. Okay, as long as we can get it through the eye of these hooks. So today, uh, I'm going to try and get through uh, five flies again, similar to last time. I kind of want to give a bit of a, a, a sort of an overview of uh, some patterns that you can maybe tie yourselves, take out, and that would hopefully cover you for a range of um, either terrestrials or invertebrates, mergers, duns, spinners, that sort of thing. Um, so there we go. Uh, at the moment, um, feel free to jump in any questions. I'm not the sort of guy to keep you to the end because uh, you might forget them. So at the moment, any questions before I kick off with the, with the first fly? Nope, all rare in a go, good to see, right. Let me try and change. Camera. Right. So for the interest of tonight, uh, we I can only uh, show you a certain size of hooks uh, because of the camera. Right. We are constrained slightly by the quality of, of um, not so much zoom, but my camera and, and everything else. Right. Which isn't bad. But at the same time, I want to kind of show you some detail um, as well as show you the patterns we're tying. So. Uh, the first couple of patterns going to be on size 20s. All right. So it's still fairly small. Right. We'll. Uh, We'll, we'll start fairly 
Nice. Okay, so this is size 20. Um, for reference, this is a Partridge SLD2. Nice and strong hook. Uh, and of course, the beauty here is we're using small flies. So instantly you think small hook, fragile hook, uh, thin, thin wire. The SLD2 has some serious grunt on it, right? Um, you, you, can, you can land some proper fish with these. Um, so we're going to tie what's called, let me just flip back while I'm talking. We're going to tie an RS2, okay? So again, another Coloradian, color he's from Colorado, right? Uh, rim Chung, okay? So RS2 means rims semblance two. There was a Mark one, I imagine. I haven't seen that, but there's a number two. Um, and this is more of an emerger, right? Um, now, again, these are small flies, okay? So we don't have to be that intricate. Generally, the little bit more mess to them gives a sort of buggy, crippled midge impression, right? And again, it's going back to that GIS uh, general um, impersonation of shape and size, okay? So we just want something that's the general approximation of what we're trying to imitate, and then we're trying to put it in a position that a trout would expect it, okay? If a trout expects it, half the battle is done. Um, then we need to let it flow in the right uh, way without drag. So without further ado, uh, and less talking, um, so there's going to be a couple of materials to this. Um, hook, we're going to use again our, um, our gel spun thread. So I'm just going to enter the hook there. Let me just drag the light over slightly so you can see that better, and I can. And then we're just going to snip off there, okay? So. I'm just going to take the thread down to the end of the hook. And then I'm going to put the tails in there. For the tails, we're just using micro fillets and only two. Now, there's a couple of guys that like Mr. Rim Chung himself. He sort of ties these in a million and one patterns, right? To imitate like the Adams. So it's going to be gray, for example. Uh, blue winged olives. All right. Now I only tie, tend to tie them with whatever dubbins out on the on the table, right? Um, again, keeping it simple. I kind of want to put them in quite long. I'm gonna have a, a loose wrap over the top, and then just another loose wrap. All right. Just make sure that they're positioned on top of the hook shank, and then I'm just gonna draw them back about I don't know uh, a length and a bit of the hook. All right. And we're gonna tighten down. Well up. And I'm just going to put my thumbnail underneath, split them. And I'm going to put a, a wrap in between, not too tight, one behind. And that's going to kick them up quite nicely. And I'm just going to cover these fillets up the body. Again, as I mentioned in the last session, I just want to incorporate those into the body so we haven't got any major bumps or, or drops. There we go. So I'm just going to wrap my thread back, but not all the way. So I want to start a little rough taper right to the body, like a little carrot chip. And that's yeah, it's out of focus. Is it out of focus? That's there better. All right. Now that stage, you, you could use. Um, you can use thread yourself if you want for your body, um, but for this one, we'll we'll just use dubbing, right? Um, and I've got uh, sort of a snowshoe mix uh, on the desk, so we'll just use that. Again, in my last session, we talked about um, you know colors and they all look dark from underneath, so I'll stick by it. Again, we don't need a huge amount, right? Because it's well, it's a size 20, so we don't need a massive amount. And I don't want any sort of too many scraggly hairs, because again, it's an emerge. I want it to sit in the film. I don't, I don't want any scraggly hairs to stop it punching through. Again, if we want, we can put this dub in under the, under the uh, tails as well. There we go. And then bring it up. Again, keeping that taper to the body. 
And what I'll do, obviously, uh, later tonight or maybe tomorrow is pop these images on in a bit more detail so you can actually see them up close. There we go. That's fine. So again, we've got rough sort of uh, tapered body there. Um, so we're going to put a, a wing in next. Now, for this, I'm going to be using um, Samplefly's uh, polypropylene floating yarn, poly yarn, okay, so it's a floating material. Um, again, it comes in uh, one sort of thickness. Um, so essentially, we're going to half that or even third it. So I'm just going to stick my needle in the middle, and just draw it down. So that we end up with a thinner piece of material, right? And what we're going to do, I'm just going to snip and make a tight cut on the end. All right. And I'm just going to lay that on top. Just a pinch and loop, not too tight because I want to draw it through. And go tie that in. Okay, that's going to be our wing in a minute. Now you can change the thorax color if you want, it's completely up to you. Um, make it more realistic, um, maybe try and impersonate the natural a bit closer if you want to. It's fine again. Um, I'm just going to stick to the same color, keep it nice and simple. And again, just to uh, this, uh, mix of snowshoe rabbit dubbing is quite buoyant as well. And again, just want to form a bit of a, a bulbous ahead there and then bring forward. Now, the problem with small flies is obviously we've, we've got um, a lot of material out there. We could put a lot of thread wraps in potentially, but with this really fine diameter thread, um, it does give us, uh, it's just sort of like hide away to nothing. This is where the beauty of Semperfly Nano Thread sort of comes in a lot. So uh, we're just going to do a couple of turns now just to tie off. And that is going to be our RS2 in a moment. Quick tidy up. And all we're going to do now with the wing, we're going to bring it straight forward. And then we're going to cut in line with the eye. Okay, and that's going to be it. So that is our RS2 emerger essentially. Okay, so there's nothing much to it. It's a very simple tie. And because of that slight little wing there, it's surprisingly easy to see. Um, you might think, you know, these sizes in, um, I, I fish these down to 24s. It's kind of the smallest, the most comfortable I'm, I'm happy with these days. Um, because one, you know, you've got to thread them, you've got to fish them. You're using really fine diameter tippets and again, fish welfare as well. If you're fishing the really small sizes on silly tippets like eights and nine X's, then there's a chance you could break off into the fish. And again, uh, fish welfare, you don't want to get them infected or, or anything like that. So again, um, seven X is the smallest I go to. So generally 24 uh, is my confidence level. So there we go, a nice and sort of uh, buggy RS2. That wing, uh, again, acts as just that, all right, an emerging sort of wing. Uh, it could be also a cripple, but again, this gives us a, a good sort of solid emerger pattern that, again, we, we can see from, from a distance, all right? Um, again, super, super, super sort of pattern, um, does it all really. And I always have a good, uh, good sort of dozen of these in my box, generally around the 20 and 24 mark. There's not a huge amount of difference when it comes to uh, the small sizes. So, um, Sort of jump in between maybe a size 22 and a 24 there's not much in it so i tend to jump a couple of sizes and i'll have 22s and 20 26s maybe um but I, I won't you know have every single size in there because you just just don't need it there we go so this is the first one the rs2 again nice and simple um and again we're sort of going to work up maybe through the water column now so we've got one uh in the surface film <clears throat> um and the next one we'll do is maybe something slightly a little higher, um, maybe in to on top, and this is going to be a cripple, right? So again, RS2, again, photos to follow. Um, I'll follow those up with some high def ones on, on Facebook. Um, so we're going to stay still in, I think, yeah, size 20 still. We will go down to a 24 in a bit, um, but I like to warm up, see, so uh, we'll, we'll hit the 24 in a bit. Um, 
So next, kind of a cripple, right? Now you can use a paradigm for this if you want. Again, if a fish expects it in that sort of area, in that riffle bubbling, whatever, then, you know, if it's presented right and it expects food, it's generally going to take food, right? Um, but again, just, just for the instance of, of this really, and just to show another um, style, then we'll, we'll tie a cripple now. And this is going to sort of, we're going to add extra materials now as we go along. Uh, so the next one's going to be sort of a cripple, all right? So, um, you know, it's going to be a bit more buggy, a bit messier. It's going to have a sort of a start of a wing, but it's going to flop over. You know, it's not going to be the pretty ephemera that we all know and see on paintings and whatnot. Uh, this is going to be, uh, you know, well, yeah, cripples, stillborns, um, and there's bajillions of them as well. So um, so a bit different. So still size 20, um, still same same hook, vessel two, nice and strong, um, same thread. Um, in fact, we're going to be using the same thread uh, all night. I'm just going to flip to a black um, in a bit. Um, that's the that's going to be the only difference. Um, but we're going to incorporate a couple more materials now. So uh, let me flip over to the extreme close-up camera. Um, so let um, do me a favor, Derek. If I do go out of focus, it's on autofocus at the moment. So if uh, if I do go out, then uh, let me know and we can switch. So yeah, again, no awesome. So again, I'm start, I'm giving myself a little bit of space, right? I'm starting, you know, not directly behind the eye because I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, cover the eye or I don't want to um, end up having to make things tough for myself. So I'll give myself plenty of room on these smaller, smaller bits of uh, steel. So again, we're going to come down to the bend, all right, end of the shank, and then we're going to tie a tail in. So again, you can use anything you want, right? Um, for this one, I'll make it a little bit different and I'll use uh, Coq de Leon. Uh, now, even though we're in the smaller sizes still, um, I'm gonna tie four in, and that's not because, you know, I wanna anything else, but I just want um, some resilience there with the tails. Then again, if a, if a trout breaks a couple of tails off on a size 20, then, uh, I think it'll knacker the entire pattern rather than uh, just the tails. So again, just measured it up. We kind of want it. Uh, this is an emerging sort of pattern as well. Um, so it's almost at the teenage stage, but unfortunately hasn't made it. Um, so again, just loose wraps, just size it up. Uh, if you want, use your scissors. This is kind of what I do. Use your scissors and then line it up to the tail. And that's bang on. Um, and then you'll always have that consistency. Again, uh, we're not snipping there, so we're just going to tie down and tighten as we go forward. What I'm going to do now is start to um, look at the, the ratios, right? So the um, abdomen to the thorax, right? Three quarters to maybe a quarter or two thirds to a third, um, whichever you decide, you know, it, it just makes your, your collection look rather pretty. Um, and we're just going to cover that up. So again, I'm just going to go and just look as I go and then just wind it back down. Again, we're using this super, super thin thread. So we're not worried about, you know, multiple fly um, turns because we can afford them. So I'm just going to clean up my desk a second because it's an absolute tip. It's a problem with these demos. You can have everything out prepared. Um, so again, I'm going to use um, similar as we use for the 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 wing in the last fly, uh, if you can see that. Again, polyon, all right? So again, it comes in different colors. This one's a copper. Um, all I'm gonna do on this one is, again, I'm gonna cut a whole section off. And what I wanna do, I kinda wanna put a bit of a messy shuck in, right? Um, put my glasses back on a shuck. And for that, I'm just gonna take, so I've got um, one cutting, right? Um, which is going to be huge. We don't we don't want that for the shock. We literally want a few fibers, um, three or four. So one, two, three, four. Chuck the rest. They can be used for something else. Uh, snip that and come back to the camera. So again, I've got a tiny amount, right? A little wisp, so to speak. If you can see that, um, and I'm just going to tie the whole lot in. I'm going to bring it up and under, lay it on top, 
and then tie down. And eventually when I come to it, we'll snip that like half the length of the tail, just so it gives it a bit of um, messiness all right, to the tail. Again, it's a cripple. It's not actually got to the, to the full emergent stage yet. It's, uh, it's died for whatever reason, drown or whatever else. So we'll tie up, tidy up the front. I won't do that yet because I've got other materials going on top of it. And again, we'll just form a bit of a carrot shape. Start to form that body. And again, bring it back down to the tail. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna use the same, no, actually I'll use a different dubbing on this one just to keep things interesting. Right, so this is a great material. Um, this is uh, the Capoc or Capoc dubbing I, I mentioned in the last one. Um, so again, I don't know whether you can see all these different sort of colors by Semplify, they're all great. They, it's a naturally floating, natural material grown on trees. Uh, it's part of the bark. Um, and I'm just going to use, again, something quite generic. And again, I just want a wisp of it, really. I not much. Again, it's gone on to a, a tiny hook. And this is where some of the tires get quite um, creative because they because they're not tying with much of a dubbed material, it quite often, more often than not, shows through the, under, the, the actual thread that you're using. So it's quite an opaque body. So this is where you can use pens if you want, just to you know, get a nice mix of colors. Again, it's, uh, it's up to you. I quite, quite like the, the sparse, sparse body. And again, we're tying on top of the sort of uh, carroty shaped body. So again, just gonna add a little bit more dubbing. Again, easier to add than it is to take away, certainly in these smaller sizes. So nothing wrong with uh, adding as you go. Right, okay. So we're at the point now where, again, it's a cripple, it's a bit of a mess. Um, we're gonna tie a hackle in, uh, but we're also gonna tie a bit of a wing in. Um, but at this point, we want the, uh, uh, the, the wing, right? So you could use CDC, you could use DIA here, again, a little bit um, more troublesome in these smaller um, smaller sizes, DIA here. Um, we will do a pattern with DIA in, in a bit, but all I'm gonna do means as I've got that um, floating yarn in front of me. And again, I'll just take an appropriate amount. Um, and what I'm doing, I'm just looking at one piece and I'm just pulling the bits away until it looks about Looks about right, okay. So again, this is that poly um, poly on, and I'm just going to take things a little closer to the eye. Again, up and uh, just going to lay on top. I'm just going to draw back. Okay, so this is going to be the, uh, the 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 base. Now I'm going to tie my hack into right. And I have one right here ready. So um, let me just measure that. Up. Yeah, that's fine. Right. So I've got a grizzly hackle. Right. It can be pretty much anything you want. Whatever you whatever you've got. Again, it's um, this is just going to give us a bit of buoyancy. Just lift that pattern a little higher than um, the last emerger style pattern. Right. So I'm just going to clean up the the base so I'm not tying on to a mess. All right, and again, we've got two sides, right? You got, you know, as you know, shiny side or top side, and then you've got the duller side, which is uh, the back of the fiber. You're going to tie this. I'm going to tie it towards me, but with a shiny, shiny, shiny side towards me. Uh, so when I wrap, uh, it's going to wrap forward nicely, and just in the way I want. Okay, so, oops, sorry, and the camera. I'm just going to take that butt off. And then we'll wrap forward in a bit. Okay, so just have a look at that wing. Is it positioned right? Yeah, it's all cool. And then I'm just going to wrap this forward. Again, impersonation of shape, right? So we just want something, because we're going to trim this as well in a minute. Um, so we're not too worried about being nice and neat. Camera's right in my way, so I'm trying to 
move that around gave it a wiggle and that came off nicely and then we're going to park the thread just underneath that front wing okay that's going to be the wing that comes up and it's going to look to the fish like uh oh got a bit of unwrap here okay so as i mentioned the, the problem or the challenge with these smaller flies is and the smaller materials um they're very fine right so this uh that strong gel spun thread can really uh cut through your materials right and i'm sure i'll do it again later when i tie in uh, um deer here there we go so let me just rewrap this and bring it forward tie that in again here we go saved but not over yet now the beauty of these smaller flies is you only need a couple of wraps of anything right um that's the beauty of it and when you see these flies up close and personal or other guys that do them not so much me because i've just snapped everything off um is you know you can see instantly the the the, the the material that they used, uh, small amount of wraps, uh, small amount of uh, materials, and it, it is really quite cool to cool to see. You think you know you've, you've used hardly anything there. Um, so I'm just going to tidy this up now, right? So as I mentioned, we've got this big wing, all right. We don't want all of that. We just want uh, something sticking forward. We want a bit of a mess, all right. So that that's about the right amount. I'll just tidy up if I've got any hackle in the way again. I want this to float in a specific way. I'm just tidying as we go. And then the back of the wing, we can pretty much get rid of the whole thing. Snip, snip as we go. And then again, the wing, oh, sorry, the, the, the shuck or the, or the mess at the tail, again, we can, we can be fairly um, close with that. And then lastly, if you want to, again, as I say, it is it is a sort of stillborn um, or cripple, all right? So it's gonna be fairly close. So what I'll do, I'll just park it closer to the water by snipping the underneath, all right? So we've still got sort of stabilizers underneath, all right? So you've still got a bit of um, hackle material to the sides, to the, to the, to the sides of the, the, the hook. That's gonna hold it in place. So it'll always float um, like that, all right? And that's it. So again, I tend to fish these. I kind of uh, grease up the hackle, maybe the tail. Don't worry too much about it because at the end of the day, if it does get drowned or soaked, then again, I'll, I'll, I'll use desiccant powder to, uh, to, to bring it back to life. And that kind of ends up in these small sizes. It's kind of hard to use desiccant powder on a specific part of the fly. Um, so I just do the whole lot and I don't tend to worry too much about it. And there we go. So there we go. There's there's the last one uh, or the second one. Just a nice simple low riding um, cripple. All right, nice and easy. And again, that wing at the front, you can use whatever you want because of the hackles. Quite a uh, it's quite white. You can see it from quite a distance. Um, and again, even in those smaller twenty fours and twenty sixes, if you wanted to, again you can uh, you can play around with them and, uh, and see how you get on. And there we go. So pattern number two. Let me just flip back. Now, uh, the next pattern we'll do is um, a paradon. All right. So we're entering sort of the, the, the ephemera um, area now where um, we're actually going into true um, sort of duns and adults and, and whatever else. But this pattern, again, as you can imagine, if you want to imitate spinners, again, with a, with a para post, um, which you'll be able to see from distance. You can use pink um, poly yarn, you can use orange, black in low light is pretty good, um, surprisingly. Then um, it's your call, right? Um, I tend to stick to white for the most part because I'm generally fishing these on very slack water. Um, if, it, if I was fishing faster water, like a small stream or something that's a bit more broken, tumbly, faster stuff, then I might opt for a pink post because you've got all that too many white flecks really to pick out your fly. You just got the natural bits of foam and, and everything else that's in the on the water surface. But generally when I fish small, small flies, they're generally to very picky fish on slack mirror like water, right? Where you know you you can see a mile uh, your fish uh, your your fly a mile off. Um, so We'll go a little smaller. Now I've uh, warmed up the eyes and um, 
Yeah, we'll try a size 24 um, paradon, okay? Now this is the partridge midge as, uh, you know, they, uh, they worked hard on that name, uh, the midge. It's a finer wire, all right? So it does need a little bit more care when tying, again, with GSPs, you pull a bit too hard and you can bend this hook, right? But because of the way, obviously, we're tying the tippet on, it's direct pull away from the shanks, so it really does it um, bend. And it's surprising the, the really the hook um, strength when it's you know, embedded in the side of a, a fish's mouth, right? Because you're pulling on the shank um, and there's very little um, pressure really on that, on that bend because of the way that small, small hook sits. Um, so again, a uh, hackled fly this time. Uh, well, uh, another hackled fly rather, um, but we're gonna do a paradun, right? Parachute. So again, um, this one's a little bit more uh, tricky because we've got more things coming on. We've got to tie underneath the, uh, the hackle, um, the feather itself. Um, and then we've just got a little bit more going on. So this is really a um, uh, similar theme to what I did in the last um, video, oh, so the last session, because we did a paradigm there, but that was a size 16, right? So essentially almost half in it here. Um, so let me change. So first off, any questions so far? Um, we're kind of coming up in the water column now, we've done the merger, uh, cripple, so it's not quite on top. Um, now we're sort of rising up a little bit, but um, beauty with this pattern is if you want to imitate spinners maybe in a paradigm form so that they're highly visible, uh, then just make the wing slightly bigger, less turn maybe, a little bit more uh, fragile and longer tails, nice and simple, okay? So you can use fibbits if you want, you can use cock de leon, use whatever you want. Um, but again, it gives you that variance, right? Same hook size, but again, you can just vary it and um, uh, fish a spinner if you want. I personally prefer fishing paradigm style spinners, um, purely personal, because if you do the sort of splayed spent wing um, spinner, they look awesome, um, but for the life of you, because they sit so small, you can't see them, um, or I certainly can't anyway. So for me, they, these work well. If you do want to fish the, the spent wing spinners in very small sizes, and even size 16s, 18s, right, um, they're still going to sit so low that you won't be able to see them very easily. So again, a trick that I kind of do is um, for the smaller sort of midge, Sharonamid um, patterns is tie them sort of New Zealand style and fish them New Zealand style, like a duo. So you've got a big buoyant dry fly that you can see, you know, a mile off. And then behind that, just a foot, two foot, and then you can tie on your very, very small flies. If that clink hammer or, or buoyant fly moves, uh, dips, whatever, again, you're striking the same way you would uh, with a, a duo and a dropper, all right? Um, just a, you know, helps me to my LB2. But generally for the most part, we're fishing these sorts of patterns on very slower, slacker water the mirror sort of stuff which gets quite quite tricky we're not really fishing them on very fast broken water because why do we need to we can fish and get away with bigger patterns because the takes are going to be more smash and grab food comes over let's eat dip before we worry about what it is um quite often they'll spit it um because it's not food fag butts twigs i've seen them take everything uh, so here we go uh let me flip over again so we're going a little bit smaller and apologies hopefully you can see hopefully you can see that it's not a huge amount of difference if um as i said if we go back to that rs2 let me get a let me get a clip so i can hold it next to it if you look at the difference we're talking sort of millimeters all right so it's still a little bit bigger hopefully you can see the, the difference there but um, we're starting to get into the, the proper micro territory now, which is uh, quite fun. So um, I'd, I'd urge you all to give these a try um, one day, maybe in the winter when you've got a little bit more time. Right, so paradigm then. Um, again, empty thread. And this is exactly the same um, style of tie-in, right? That I don't deviate um, this, this style for any sort of um, parachuted pattern, whether it be a clink hammer or paradun. Um, it's always the same, right? So I always form or follow the same uh, setup. So I lay my base for the post and then I stop my thread where I want the sort of wing post or the center of it to be, right? So that's a bit far forward. So I'm gonna wrap off. Again, we'll go back to this poly yarn. Again, I don't want a huge amount because I don't want it to sort of make the fly um, cast 
in a wrong sort of oh, in a bad way. I don't want it to sort of um, stop it from turning over. I don't want it to stop it from drifting naturally. Um, so I'll find an appropriate thickness of poly yarn. All right, that will probably do because it'll set up as I tie it in. And again, I'm going up under and up, parking it on top of the shank. And then with a loose turn, I'm just wrapping over the top and then tight turn on the pull up. And that is it. So I'm just gonna park my thread behind. And if for those who've seen me tie um, parachutes before, I'm just gonna pull these two up. Okay, and then I'm, with loose turns, I'm just gonna turn this away from me a second. I'll pull it back in a moment. And then I'm just gonna do in touch and turns loosely. I'm just gonna work up the post. And I've gone up, what, six turns there? That'll probably do. And then we'll come back down to the base. There we go. So we're gonna lock that in in a moment. So I just wanna make sure that that sits vertically and I'm gonna lock that in place because I don't want it to twist around the shank and I don't want it to sort of twist back and forth. What I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna put these sort of bookends in now um, and just form a wedge either side, which also help when we form taper of the body. Again, size 18 you know, GSP is like, very little build up. Try this with a 12 volt standard, you know, spun thread and uh, you'll see the difference. Again, tool for the job, right? So again, I'm happy with that. Uh, so I'm gonna get another hackle. This one is a little smaller because again, we're on a smaller hook. Um, this is a sort of shorter shanked hook anyway. So I'm just gonna grab my hackle a moment. And again, tidy up the end, I'll show you in a moment. Uh, this one's doesn't matter really. This one's speckled badger. This is one sexy rustic uh, saddle. This I am a bit of a, as they say, a saddle when it comes to hackles. But here we are, all got problems. I'm just going to tidy that up slightly, and then I'm just going to tie this in in a moment. So all I'm doing it's a bit easier for me. Apologies for the camera. I may I may block the camera a second, but I just want to get this in so i'll just mount it in front okay um, and i'm just gonna make sure i'm just gonna pull the hackle up slightly so that the very bottom most hackle fiber is just above the top of the post okay and i'm just gonna pull that up and again i'm just gonna wrap up the post in not too tight turns again i don't want to too tight and it'll bring the whole lot around the shank right so i'm just gonna wrap up and then bring it back down. Now the key, I suppose, here is, as I said, tool for the trade, um, or tool for the job rather, is we've got in there four layers of thread and a hackle stem, okay? Um, again, light's a bit off here, but, so that, that's considerable amount of material. If you think about it for a size 24, but the buildup is very small, right? Um, and again, this is where the beauty of, you know, things like midge saddles and capes come in um, and also where um, specific materials like um, nano silk and GSPs come in as well. So I'm gonna, I'm not gonna snip the, the butt of that uh, um, hackle off just yet. I'm just gonna incorporate that into the body again um, just making it easy. I don't want to smash a load of uh, thread into it when I don't need to. I'll incorporate that into the body and then we'll snip just a little bit lower down. So again, I'll bring this down and end of the shank. And now I'm gonna put my tail in. So again, um, just cause it's in front of me, I'll use Cock de Leon. Cock de Leon's got that sort of speckledness to it. So from, you know, although I kind of always say that, nah, don't worry about color and stuff. Um, I, I kind of like the way Cock de Leon sort of um, suits Speckled Badger. It's got the same sort of um, feel, but you can use um, rooster hackle fibers. You can use for bits, you can use whatever you want, right? So it's totally up to you. Again, um, all I'm gonna do is sort of mount that, just uh, lick it so those fibers stay together. 
loose wrap over the top, my pinch and loop, loose one, and then I'm just going to draw up and push with my left thumb. And again, we just want it an appropriate size. These are scissors if you want. Yeah, that's cool. Happy with that. And a strong wrap pulling up, and then we can wrap forward again, incorporating those into the into the body, right? There you go. So I'm just going to snip those off now that they're in. And now I'm just going to run my thread back down to the base. Again, it's the beauty of uh, a small thread. I bet you're going to look forward to some of the pictures of these because uh, I can hardly see in front of me, let alone on the camera, right? So hopefully it's not, uh, it's not too bad. So again, we use, again, yeah, you've got so many choices these days. Um, let me just uh, just change cameras a second. Um, so we used something like a, just a generic dubbed packet of, yeah, it's a mix of uh, rabbit foot dubbing and, and uh, his, his mask. Um, but you've also got stuff like um, Semply um, Super fine, okay, again, synthetic material, very fine as the name states. They've got natural materials such as the Cape Arc, again, buoyance. Um, again, it, it dubs down very fine. So again, use whatever you want, whatever you've got, but don't use anything too, um, uh, something that's gonna really take on water, right? Because it's small enough as it is, we don't wanna drown it as soon as it lands. So this is where, um, as, as often as I don't tend to use synthetics, I am much more of a fan of naturals. Um, but in these smaller sizes, this is where those materials really come into their own, okay? Because they don't absorb water. Uh, a lot of them uh, actually put expel water. Um, and this is where they, they kind of come in. And uh, they're, they're again, it's identifying those um, uh, materials for the job, right? So if I flip back to the camera, let me just pop the light over there. Uh, so what I'm going to use, I'm just going to, I don't know, just show you the difference. I'm now we're going to use uh, the super fine dubbing. And again, let's use a color we haven't used yet because I'm being boring. Uh, this one's a light olive. There you go. Everyone knows what an olive is. So we'll use a, a light olive. Now, the only difference is with uh, super fine style dubbings. Uh, I don't know whether you can pick that up on the camera. They're very, very long fibers. Right, that's that's the only problem. They're all, they're just long. Right, that's just the way they they're made. But what you could do is just chop them down. Um, use your scissors, chop them down into smaller parts. Again, that's perfect for this style of of pattern. Um, because otherwise, you know, you, you kind of put your dubbing on and create your dubbing loop, and you've got enough dubbing to um, tie about eight flies. So, and it's quite hard. It doesn't tease out like a natural fiber does. So you, you do need to cut it. And then, of course, you've got the, the downside then of um, a, a, a trim, you know, which is always going to leave a, a drop or a bump. So let me start thin and end thick. Again, we don't want it too thick. Again, we can leave it nice and opaque if we wanted to. That's fine. Let's cover the base. Of that again, these work quite well for, like, you know, as you can imagine, in this color, aphid. Um, there's loads early season uh, locally with me. Let me try and pull out of that point. That's great. And if you want to tighten things up, if you can see, I've, I've dubbed back down to the body, right, where I've got no dubbing on my, on my uh, thread now. I can spin the thread. I can really lock that dubbing down by almost um, tying in back to the back to the head, almost tying in like a like a like a rib, and that'll that'll tighten everything down nicely. Again, give us a nice nice profile. Again, watch that pressure on the hook because it, it it will bend these hooks. And again, we'll just tie off at this point. Again, we're not going to build a head or anything. Fly turns there with nano silk and it'll disappear to nothing. Again, the 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 importance I suppose that of tying these smaller ones is not just tying something that imitates um, what we're trying to you know um, get 
a bit of fish to eat, but also something that um, doesn't crowd the eye um, because we still need to get it on our, our bloody tippet, don't we? So just gonna give the body a quick trim before I go into the wing. Uh, that'll do, cool. So next, if you remember from last time, I like to move uh, the pattern in the vise at this point. Hopefully you can see that okay. Um, so we're just gonna use a more of a horizontal platform now. And we're gonna tie onto the, onto the, onto the post itself. So bear with me, camera's in the way ever so slightly. So I'm just gonna enter my thread. Drag that out. Again, working with saddle hackles can be a bit more of a challenge because they're so long, they do get in the way. Again, just give them a wipe out and it's fine. Okay. So, right, this is where it all goes wrong all the time, right? Guaranteed. Every time you're in a demo, or you're tying in front of somebody at a show, this is where you do the small flies. And of course, you're tying it in, you're either going to tie through the hackle, as I, as I uh, very efficiently uh, showed you in the last one. Um, but this is where it sometimes goes wrong, right? So watch that pressure, I suppose. Again, these hackles got very, very thin um, stems. So we're just going to start wrapping down. So one, two, three. And could get away with four, but I suppose the question is, why do we want to? It's, again, this hackle fiber is holding up such a lightweight piece of metal. Right, there's hardly anything for it to even break the surface. So this is where it's gonna go wrong. So one, two over the top, and then I just wanna lock in wrap underneath and pull that forward. Now this point on a large 16 or 18 is where I snip off and I'm going to here and then I'm gonna wrap, wrap in a moment. So I'm just gonna go in my scissors, cut those off. Keep the tension on because I don't want that uh, hackle to come out. I'm just going to do a hand whip finish, or you can use one of those extended uh, whip finish tools. Again, just pull up nice and lightly, a uh, bit of pressure, and that's going to because this gel spun thread is lit, is basically a plastic, right? If as soon as you put pressure on it, it's going to sort of cut into itself. Um, it's not going to break, but it cuts in. And then it sort of almost stops um, allowing you to pull it through. So if you do it quite lightly, then uh, you can get away with it and pull through. And then as soon as you whip finish, then it will lock off very nicely. And there you go. So that isn't too shabby, I say so myself. So uh, let me cut the, the post a minute and then we can uh, have a bit of a close up. So again, uh, hopefully you can see that that's a size 24. Again, what I'll do is take some um, macro shots of these just so you've got a bit of a close up and you can see um, this in a little bit more detail. Again, video or online is always a bit um, constrained, but that's not bad to be fair for a, for a size 24. So again, you can go down. Um, what I also do when I, um, I, I show you this uh, and then the picture of it, um, I'll take a picture of a size uh, 32 as well um, and then you can see really the difference um, in size this thing is is silly right and I only ever tie them as shows just to you know uh, put it next to maybe a size 16 and, and 16 does look absolutely gigantic um, I think Tim Wood uh, one of the British fly fairs tied um, pretty much a, a size 32 ratioed fly right so the size 32 body with a size 32 hackle but he tied it on a two alt right and it was just yeah, for asking him to show you it. I'm sure you can uh, dig a picture out. It was uh, ridiculous, but it was very, very well tied. So fair play to him for, for doing that. Uh, and on a size two alt hook, it was, uh, yeah, uh, as I say, very hysterical. Okay. Um, so before we move on, um, I notice it's eight o'clock. You all happy for me to do another couple? Yeah, crack on, guys. Is that all right? Yeah, cool. Okay, so um, we kind of covered um, Femoroptera, right? So up wings, we've tied the uh, Emerger style RS2. Um, hopefully you'll see this. RS2 is probably one of my go-tos. Remember the last session, 
um, I did uh, the Toronto Mid Emerger, right, which was the, the CDC wing. We're going to do that again, but with slightly different materials, because a CDC on a size 24, you could use one, um, you could use one feather if you wanted to. But the challenge you've got there is because then again, it's so small, it's certainly float, but you just haven't got that visibility because it's a lot smaller. Again, size 16 is my go to Toronto Mid Emerger, still fairly small for what it is. Um, but on a 24, it, it just doesn't have the same sort of visibility to me. Um, and I wear contacts and I wear these things for tie in these now. And uh, yeah, my eyes are getting gradually worse. But uh, yeah, so seeing them on the river um, can be a bit more of a challenge. So I'm going to tie that last. We're going to do a, a caddis pattern next. Um, so we'll come on to that. So um, if anybody needs a, a lubric or a, a refresh, then uh, then go for it. But we're going to step back up to a 20 now. Can you hear me, Gav? I can, I Gav. Hello, bud. Right, before you, you crack on, what weight draw are you using? Four. Four? Four for everything for me. I keep things as simple as I can. Eight carry yeah. multiple rods. So yeah. four... Trout LL, nice and soft tip, smooth action, nice and soft, does it all for me. I've looked for Absolutely. one of the rods for years, and it, uh, yeah, it does it all. You can use threes, twos, zero weight, some of them. Um, David Southoli, he's great. He uses a lot of small flies, um, and he goes down into the the real small. Uh, yeah. Things. But whatever, whatever you're comfortable with, and as long as it can protect those tip bits, as you know. Um, exactly. Yeah. I use, I use the... I use the I, well. I got a Hanek uh, competition three weight. Yeah, perfect. With the, with the extension, beautiful rod. Yeah. But go. what people what people got to realize is you've got to go nice and light. Mm -hmm. If you go down with a ten foot set weight with a little hook, what's going yeah. to happen? Yeah, I said what's going to happen? I've seen this so many times and got to go nice and light. Yeah, nice and light. Tech and it's not and, it, and it's better fishing. It's nicer fishing. Yeah, you'd be well. I mean, you'd be surprised. You can still land those big fish, even on you know small like like the rods. It's a lot more. Uh, it's a lot more fun. I mean, even yeah. on small streams now, I use two weights. You know, you get a, a good fish on those type of streams, like you know, have the the tafaikan or something. Something around you know pushing a pound on a on a two weight. You can almost yeah. feel it in the handle. Uh, so yeah, it's this different style of fishing, but it does protect those you know soft tip. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's, uh, that's key. Here. I use uh well. Philip, my oldest boy, he's got a six foot six graze to weight yeah. for the vet, and it's unbelievable. Nice, and nice. it's beautiful, beautiful. Some of the, the the small streams I fish, the Sarawi is is one of them. If anyone knows in uh, in the valleys of South Wales, um, start the year great because you know the the trees haven't blown out yet. Or, or grown out rather so you can get away with nine footers um and a four weight's fine because you then you you know you, that time of year um it's still quite cold up in those areas and certainly it is at the very top of the the river taff in the taff back and um you know you're looking at april may before it properly warms up but august <laughs> yeah it's true um so you can get away with you know uh the uh, heavier sort of weighted rods because you want to maybe turn over like a do or something like that with a two weight it gets uh gets interesting but yeah. Oh, perfect, yeah. uh, perfect dry fly rods though uh right what we're we gonna do now so this is a deviation on um uh cdc elk i say deviation is the cdc elk right um but again um going back to the river ask um we get about now um from Start of July, maybe we get. Um, and there's a, a colleague of mine on in Grant Anglin that um, has really studied these, um, uh, and they are really just micro caddis, right? They have got a name. I don't remember these names. I just call them micro caddis, right? And they go. They range from as big as size twenty um, to about maybe a twenty-four. They're absolutely tiny. But when you do hit the right and you do find them. Um, People, uh, a couple of members have thought, right, what the hell are they taking? I can see caddis, but they're nothing like I've ever seen. And they are there, these these, these small agapetis or something like that, they think they're called. Um, but they're very small, right? So if you do a bit of Googling on uh, either Facebook or the Grand Anglian Society website uh, for Dave Collins, uh, 
Adjapetis. I'll make reference to the name um, and I'll try and include a link as well. Uh, this is pretty much um, going to um, in, in, impersonate that, right? So it's a very small caddis imitation. Um, again, again, if we'll come on to a little thing I'll, I'll mention later, I won't, I won't say anymore, but we'll just jump into this, uh, this pattern as well. So uh, let me switch camera. So we're going to use a, a deer hair wing, all right? So as the CDC and elk sort of um, mentions, it was a deer hair, the original CDC and elk. Um, it wasn't actually elk, it was deer. Um, so yeah, I've got um, a very fine um, sort of, what's this, coastal deer hair? Coastal? No, comparison. So it's very, very fine um, and not too long either. So, but we're only going to use the tips. Uh, so again, we don't want to uh, cut uh, it to death either. So there's my thread. Um, so again, let me just mount this back on. So you don't hear me hammering the desk to death. Um, I've already um, sort of straightened this hair, right? And I've aligned it in a, in a hair stacker. So you're not going to hear too much banging, hopefully. The neighbours love it. I know when I'm tying um, caddis. That's all they hear all night. So um, we'll come back to that in a moment. Um, what do I need? Right, CDC feather, nothing too big. So th this sort of pattern is when, you know, you've got uh, your nice sort of, if you use the cooksill bags of, of, of deer hair, generally really good. And then you get um, some smaller feathers, which everybody goes, what the hell am I going to use those for, right? It's the same as any sort of feather, right? You're always going to get a, a variation there. Um, well, you know, just tie some smaller patterns um, and you're, you're away. So again, similar to what I did if you were on the last session, I'm going to separate the feather, right? So if you can see that, I've just drawn a number of fibers back and it's that front bit here that I'm gonna use the body. And then by the time I finished wrapping it, these longer fibers will start to sort of almost hackle out around um, the body, right? So give us some nice mobility um, and some nice uh, nice uh, buoyancy too. Because, oh, sorry, I need to hit everybody over. So again, just gonna under, up and over, all right? So I'm just gonna hold some tension on my, uh, on my thread and I'm just gonna pull through. And when it's there, tight turn over the top, lock in turn in front, Again, that gives us very little buildup on this already very small fly. Again, like last time, this is what? Two ingredients excluding the thread. This, uh, this is a pretty good, one of my favorite patterns. This I use, I use the CDC analysis a lot uh, this time of year. Um, when I'm fishing in the dark for like, um, at the moment, blue wings uh, on uh, the usk. Uh, last sort of hour of the day or the evening. Out to focus. Oh, sorry. Let me stick my finger. It's because I'm. That's there. better. There we are. So I'll, I'll use these because I can see it. And I haven't got to worry about, you know, they, and they do last quite a bit. They're very robust um, patterns, considering, you know, you, you're wrapping this with no rib. A couple more, and then we'll stop. Don't want it too fluffy. So hopefully when I clean this up in a moment and trim off, I'm just going to remove some of these fibers because again, I don't want, I don't want a huge amount of, uh, I'm just going to take the top part off, just trim the top and leave the bottom. Loads of mobility there. All right. Um, and that's going to act as a nice um, bit of buoyancy. Um, nice little stability as well. Um, give us everything we need, hopefully, to uh, draw a fly, uh, draw, draw a trout up. Uh, and the, the wing is fibers of deer hair. And when I say a few, I've got about, what's here? Uh, about 12, All right? Not a huge amount on a, on a larger fly. Um, obviously, you want a bit more, a bit more of a pinch. Again, we just want to extend that back over the butt of the pattern. 
Now then, if I was to pull too tight here, I'm going to strip, split straight through this. So I'm going to watch my pressure. I'm just going to do a wrap through. So I've done a wrap on top, a wrap through, and then lift the whole lot and wrap underneath. All right. Now I personally, again, I'm not the the tying police. Some people say no, no, you've got to you've got to snip before you tie on, and that's fine. For me, I prefer this because then I can keep them out of the way. I can manipulate them a little bit more, and then in the end, it's not much work to drag them forward and then give me a nice bulbous head there. And that, more often than not, at this time of year, when I'm struggling to see anything on the water or what the hell are those trout taking, that is, is all we need. Again, a CDC and elk in smaller sizes. Uh, size 20 kind of does it for me. Um, 24s is pushing it a bit because then I've, I've got to kind of use the the thinner diameter tippet. And as I'm sure you all know, if um, you're using, um, you're, you're tying or, or impersonating caddis, the, the takes can sometimes be quite aggressive. Um, who knows how a trout thinks, but generally I've seen caddis takes and they can absolutely smash them. So again, you're going down into those very uh, thinner diameters can, can cause us problems break off, things like that. As good as soft and supple as your rod might be, it ain't gonna protect the tippet um, to, to a really aggressive tick. So again, probably one of my go-to small fly patterns uh, this time of year anyway, and certainly on the river us where we get good um, caddis um, hatches and certainly those um, the smaller micro caddis patterns as well. There we go. Uh, right, we're on to the last, um, pattern so let me just shift things around slightly we're going to use a curved hook for the first time i believe yeah curved hook and this one is probably one of my favorite hooks right if you've got a favorite hook then you might just be as sad as me right um so let me just um, flip the camera and then we'll talk about this pattern a little bit more so this one is um is virus uh 2200 bl b so BL barbless and B is black, right? And as the size, oh, sorry, the shape there is, you can see it's a nice fine gauge uh, wire. Uh, this one's a 16, um, but we're actually using a size 24 uh, in the vise. So if that, when it focuses, come on, there we go. Then um, you can see a nice, nice, nice curve to that hook. Um, I'm gonna swap colors out on this one and you don't really need to because the white nano silk kind of takes on whatever's around it, right? So if it's, a, if it's tied on top of black wire, then it's gonna, you pull tight enough and it's gonna, it's gonna sort of show black, right? It's quite an opaque thread, um, but we will use black. Um, again, this is, uh, where are we? Other way, Gareth, there you are, simplify, there you go. I'll take pictures and put them on uh, Facebook uh, later or tomorrow. So if you um, saw my last one, um, where we went into um, the Tronomid Emerger, right? And as I say, this is probably my, I use it all the time. Start the season, um, now, all, all the time. I, I, can't, I can't tell you how much I, I fish this. It's, um, it's my go-to, literally my go-to pattern. So what I want to kind of show you, if it works, two seconds, is what the full size, we kind of want the full size to look like. So if I share my screen a minute. Oh, Derek, can you allow me to share my screen? I think if you've got to share, then there's like security settings there or something. No worries if not. Again, I can uh, can reference it on uh, on Facebook, so it's no problem. Oh, now Derek sharing. Oh, so if you stop sharing, Derek. There you go. 
And then if you've got an option for like security or something like that down the bottom. Ah, oh, there you go. Perfect. There you go. So hopefully you can see my screen there. So uh, now this is a size 16, right? This is my go-to. Um, hopefully you can all see that on your screens. Um, we've got curved hook. This one's a size 16. Um, we've got a uh, CDC wing. There's about three or four feathers in here for a size 16. Um, so nice and buoyant. In the back, here, if you can see my mouse or on this one, we've got a bit of flash, right? So any sort of midge that um, essentially they've, they've got a life jacket. They all wear life jackets, right? They hit the button and almost expel like a little bubble, which drags them up to the surface. Um, so that is what this represents. So all we're going to do on this one, we're going from a size 16 down to a size 24. We're going to really minimize the materials um, and strip it right back, right? So we've just got the basics in here. Um, so if I stop here and I share there, um, hopefully I'm pinned still for you all. I can hear you. Yeah, am I, you, am I pinned the main screen for you all? I am, I will crack yeah. on. So got, um, uh, let me just pin that, right. So again, small hook, again, this is black right in itself. So I'm not gonna worry too much about a body on this one. Um, again, going to give myself plenty of room. I'm using black thread now, so hopefully you can still still see it. Um, just going to enter that. Um, not going to worry too much about a body, right? Because like the larger one, does the body really matter, or you know what what is the actual trigger to this fly? What is the main sort of uh, visual thing that makes a uh, trout see this? I personally think it's the dubbing there. Um, and the wing, right? So it just looks like a mess. It's midge at the end of the day, right? And there's billions of them. And again, if you if you're fishing a midge hatch, or generally even even smaller mergers, even if we're if we're imitating a smaller merger, this will do it, right? Um, so again, 24s I, I tend to use when I'm very when I'm, when I'm really struggling, right? Um, so what I'm going to do, just going to bring it back up to where I'd normally tie in the wing, right? So there's not there's no body to this at all, really. Um, and we're going to tie in a bit of flash first. Now on the larger sizes, I use, uh, if you can see it, uh, where are we? This stuff, right? Flat braid pearl uh, by Sam Flying. It's, um, hopefully you can see it. It's, just, it's quite a thick braid, right? I use a, a length of that and, I, and it's literally, I cut it to nothing, but it just gives a little bit of that flashy bubble. Um, let me just tighten this thread up a bit. Let's so, get a bit loose. There you go, it's better. Um, so for this one, obviously, we want to use the materials for the size of the uh, pattern I'm using, right? So I'm going to go back to something more like uh, this is a uh, Semper Flash, uh, or you can use Crystal Flash, something like that. But essentially, this really thin stuff, right? Doesn't matter as long as you, you don't even have to tie this in. Christ, all, all, we, all we want at the moment is, is some uh, impersonation of a couple of legs and that's about it, right? So all I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna pull this again up and under and I'm just gonna draw it back slowly and just make sure that I sat on top. I'm just gonna give it one, two, and a hard pull up three over the top and that's pulled it around. So as I said earlier, know your materials, Gareth, and uh, know that if you pull too hard, it's gonna pull the entire lot around, right? So here we go, it's a good demonstration of too much pressure, right? Which I meant to do, obviously. So there we go, it's better if I do a pinch and loop. And there we go, perfect. Right, so I'm just gonna snip that top one off, but I'm gonna give it a bit of a knock in wrap in front. Now uh, it's 24, so we're still in sort of the realms of, you know, with, you know CDC isn't too big, right? Um, but because we can tie this down to like 28, you know, um, proper small, proper, proper small sizes, um, we'll tie it like, we'll tie it like it's a small 28, but for the camera, it's gonna be a pain for you to see. So what I'm gonna use again, I'll go back to the poly yarn, right? So again, quite a synthetic fly, this one. 
So we don't want a huge amount of it. Um, so I'm just gonna, I've got the whole lot here, right? So I'm gonna tie the whole lot in because I'm not worried about waste at the moment. Um, so I'm just gonna sit that on top. Nice loose wrap over the top. Make sure I'm not crowding the eye. And then one, two, three, four wraps. And that is fine. Okay, so that's going to be our wing, right? So if you were to take yourself back to the image I just showed you, we used CDC. Um, again, as I said, I've opted for this poly on in these smaller sizes, because if we were to use CDC, okay, you could still maybe get away and see it um, on very flat water. But as soon as you've got a bit of ripple, maybe it's the wrong time of evening, you've got that sort of silvery light on there, or maybe the green light, because things are, you know, stupid in bloom at the moment. Um, this is going to get kind of washed out and lost. Um, so you've either got the option, you can use that style of pattern with CDC, pop it behind two foot of tippet uh, behind a larger fly if you want, but this is this is fine. It works, you can see it, um, and, and more importantly, you can see it at distance. Um, so what am I going to use? Right, so this time I'm going to use a bit of, um, again, the natural stuff. So this, I, I want some fibers that are going to um, allow it to have a bit of mobility, a bit of mess, um, so I'm just going to unspin my thread. I'm still going to put this in split thread. This is size 18, uh, 18 old, sorry. So you still got um, not too small of a split. He says as he has trouble splitting it. There you go. Again, we don't want a huge amount. Literally want maybe, I don't know, two turns, one turn. Come on. So I'm just not going to put a whole lot in, just want, yeah, that's probably, my hands went clammy enough, it wouldn't pull through. Yeah, that'll do. So you can see there's, there's hardly any in there, right? It's hardly a dubbing loop or a dubbing rope. Um, so let me just spread that out. Again, I want to keep some of the very long fibers out of here. I also want to keep some of them in. So when we do twist this up now, I see a nice uh, spun rope of bits of hair mask and snowshoe dubbing and all sorts. Nice and buoyant, nice and buggy. Um, so what we're gonna do, one, two, three, and there we go, that's about it. And we'll pick some of these out in a minute as well. So what I'll do, I'll just lift up the whole lot. We can still see the eye nicely, okay, hopefully. Um, and then we'll just, again, we don't need a head, so we'll just, uh, um, whip finish. I like using a tool. And especially in these smaller sizes, it really gives you a... Uh, Accuracy. Yeah. Well, if you like Gavin J, you can use your hands for anything, but... Uh, yeah. <laughs> not like, not for me anyway. Uh, so I'm just going to drag everything forward now, just out of the way, because I want to trim the back of that wing. So for me, I like to twist it, keeps everything nice and tight. And then I'm just going to enter my scissors, follow it up, and then snip off. The bit of flash, be interesting to see how everyone gets on with it, really, because I've had some people say, yeah, I use it, leave it really long. I like a body. Some others don't like a body. They cut that. They don't even put the flash in. So it's um, it's always cool to hear how people get on with, you know, what you think is the same pattern, but it's just changed ever so slightly so that there you can see just gives us a tiny amount of flash and even from underneath uh, you, you they'll be able to see that so again i'm gonna brush these back again you can use stuff like squirrel if you want that's going to give us you can put some gink on it maybe um and again yeah you just have a play so i'm just going to twist this up sorry while i go in front of the camera in a minute um i'm just gonna snip that and there we go. So again, very similar to the, the pattern I showed you on screen in the image. Um, but again, we're using slightly different materials that allow this to fish more uh, naturally for its size of hook. So we've still got the nice buggy mess that a, a, that a, that a chironomid or a midge gives off um, when it sits in the water. But again, I think that gives us everything we need in terms of a fishing fly. Um, using smaller um, hooks and yeah, uh, materials to, to suit. So gents, uh, that, that is it. 
Um, as I say, it's um, small flies are kind of um, yeah, make them quick and easy, right? Don't um, don't don't hurt yourselves in terms of um, being too intricate, because at the end of the day, um, they don't need to be much. Um, we just want to be, you know, uh, pressions of, of 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 stuff on the water. Again, if if there's a there's a hatch of small flies going off, um, and you're trying to impersonate them. These these smaller flies will um, will do. So, um, just to recap, then. We did uh, the RS2, and again, I'll post all these pictures um, probably tomorrow. Uh, the RS2 or the rim semblance uh, number two. So that's a great, great um, uh, emerger style pattern, but in really small sizes. I've never really used them in larger sizes because, well, it's my go-to sort of small one. Um, be interesting to see if we get the woodwork, I imagine, in, in larger sizes. Um, then we did a cripple, all right? So we then we started to introduce some hackle. Um, and some poly yarn for a shuck and all that sort of stuff. So again, we're coming up ever so slightly in, in the water column. Um, and then we've got um, the paradon, right? So we all use paradons, I imagine, at some point um, in our fishing. I love them because you can see them from a mile off. Um, your call, right? Um, then we covered a, a caddis or micro caddis, agapetis. Uh, I will find the name out. Um, I can't remember what it's called, but again, nice and small. Um, but again, from underneath, it gives us that nice triangular um, caddis style wing. So, you know, why wouldn't they like it? And then lastly, uh, still on the vice here, we've got um, a smaller sized geronomid or CDC geronomid midge emerger, whatever you want to call it. Um, but you using um, uh, materials that are more uh, fit for those smaller patterns then, right? So instead of using CDC uh, and three or four feathers, which we use in, in size 14s and 16s and 18s, uh, obviously reduce the, the amount of bulk there. Then again, we're using more synthetic stuff, which, you know, isn't going to drag a uh, fly under, isn't going to take on water um, and is really um, treated um, really in the factory. So it does expel this stuff. Now, uh, lastly, um, just, just as a final point, which is going to sort of undermine everything I've just said. Um, if I, um, when I'm when I'm fishing sort of late at night uh, or this time of year, we talk about the dog days, right, the summer, then, um, you know, we talk about small flies and how they can come in and they, they're great. And yeah, uh, what's caught me quite a lot of fish on the flip side is when something is taking, you know, there's a, there's a stereotypical trout in the far run, uh, they're taking something one after the other after the other, right? You know it's something small, but you've put everything small over the top of it and it's just not bloody eating your flies, right? So it's driving you nuts. So at that point, I think, right, stop, because I could put every small fly in my box over um, and brilliant. So instead I go the opposite way and I go to something huge, right? Okay. Something like a mayfly, something yeah. huge, because whatever it wants does more my flies. So the, my idea is, and I might be wrong, but it does work, uh, is give it the Big Mac meal, right? If it's happy munching on chicken nuggets, one after the other, after the other, who oh, can yeah. turn down a deluxe exactly. Exactly. Big Mac, whatever, right? So yeah. it does work, not all the time, but give it something different maybe to look at, to target, um, maybe as an attractor pattern to maybe, you know, give it a bit of, uh, give it a bit of work. Um, and, and quite often than not, this will get you get out of jail. So although we've talked about everything about small flies tonight, the big ones will still work in those situations, right? So again, just have a play and have fun. Um, and I certainly don't know it all. Um, so I look forward to the next sessions with you guys and I can pick up something hopefully as well. Gary. So, yes, mate. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you ever so much. Thanks, Peter. Pleasure. Thank you very much. Very good. Yeah, we, we haven't got one next week. We'll we be tying down the unicorn next week. It'll be the week after. And yeah. Al, Al, Al was doing it for us. Yes, I will. Um, thanks for that again, Derek. But I have to think about what, what I'm going to tie. Do you have any suggestions, any questions, guys? What do you want to see? Uh, fact uh, is that I'm tying mostly streamers. So um, maybe uh, a target fish uh, you would like to, to chase. Uh, and I show you something special and uh, hopefully a new technique uh, that you might learn. Yeah. Something native to what you're fishing. Yeah. Okay. That sounds good. Yeah, good. Yeah, happy okay. with that.
Yes, yeah. I am. Awesome. Yeah. Brian, uh, I've, got a, tonight, got a, I've got a question to, uh, to Gareth. Um, many, many patterns, many dry flies. Uh, is it also an ant for you? Because I'm, I'm trying a lot with ants the last days and uh, I fished a few ants. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I'm, I'm trying with, uh, with these uh, 